I have not done an extensive research into addiction and addictive behavior and this is more of a lighthearted monologue and my experiences with being obsessed with the lenses and cameras more than actually using the tools. I will do similar videos in the near term future and hopefully you can chime in in the comments about your experiences acquiring gears. I shoot with Micro Four Thirds gear so that is the system I will defer to but these experiences can be applied to anything. This journey all started with a GH5 and a Leica 1260. I did not know anything about cameras. I remember just seeing a couple of videos where people recommended the GH5 and touting it as value king. I saw the camera on a good offer and I pulled the trigger. This one purchase fundamentally changed the course of my life the next 8 months. I mainly focused on music to now focusing on film. I probably paid $800 for the setup. And honestly, this was probably the best setup to get for $800 at that time. And the quality is insane and this was a great and healthy buy. My next purchase was a prime lens, the Sigma 56mm. I honestly did not know much about prime lenses. I didn't even know this was a portrait telephoto lens. But I thought, hey, I need to understand these prime lenses because everybody's talking about them. It set me back $200. After acquiring this lens, I did some research. And apparently there is a trio. So I started acquiring the 16mm and then purchased the 30mm. I have to finish the set, right? <sighs> And I'm not even using the 56mm to begin with. I am planning to use these lenses, especially now, but still, I collected them just to collect them. So I bought the G9 for $700, then I sold it, but rebought it two weeks after for $600. This time I kept it. I think the price was fair. It was in a mint condition. And it ended up being my favorite Micro Four Thirds camera mainly because of the ergonomics, so I think this was a decent purchase. I bought this Noctocron 42.5mm, which is regarded as being one of the best Micro Four Thirds lenses out there. I bought this lens around $700, so in my mind I'm thinking I'm not gonna take a financial hit, which is factually correct because I can probably get $700 for this lens again. But the thing is, I don't have $700. And I need that money for rent and food and just basic necessities. The lens is versatile, but it's considered to be a portrait lens. I don't have that many friends to take portraits off. So you might ask a very valid question. What's the point of me owning this lens? Which is a valid question. Honestly, the only reason I have left is me experiencing seller's remorse after selling this lens. Which is a thought process that furthers my addictive behavior even more. I bought all these lenses that makes the Micro Four Thirds iconic. I started with the 45mm and then I bought the GX9 and then all the other lenses follow. These shows what's possible within the realm of optics and when you have a smaller sensor. It's impossible to achieve the same quality and compactness in other systems. And these were the perfect lenses to pair with my GX9. So yeah, there is an added cost and I am contemplating selling either these or the Sigmas because the focal range is essentially the same. I have three macro lenses, the only one I don't have is the Leica 45mm, which I'm not going to pursue. I am not going to pursue. I'm genuinely not going to pursue. Man, that 45mm focal length might actually be nice. See, I don't want it now, but if a good offer arrives, who knows where my mind starts to wander exactly the same way it has so far. I bought a second GH5 with a second Leica 1260. Bought this to pair with my GH5, but now I already have and own the DCG9, so theoretically I don't need an additional GH5. But in my mind I'm thinking, what if I do interviews or podcasts or something in that manner? Then I would need two cameras with unlimited recording. The G9 does not have that in 4K. And the funny thing is, not once in my life have I been close to being on a podcast or conducting an interview. I'm trying to prepare for a scenario that is non-existent, at least for now. So that $800 I spent for that kit would be nice to have just in case. Throughout this process, I have bought and sold a lot of lenses and cameras to being able to afford new cameras and lenses. So overall, I think what I spent on gear is not bad because I have been very conscious about the purchases. But the agony 
stress and fatigue of buying and negotiating and deciding it takes a toll on you and it's factors that are not embedded in this price. I have bought quality gear for a decent price but the problem is my finances does not allow me to buy so much equipment. There are so many times I've had to call my family to buy some gear and sometimes feel bad for asking when I know they at times struggle with finances as well. An important note, there is also a relationship between achieving a constant dopamine hit from being able to collect and gather the perfect set of lenses. It will give you the illusion of thinking you achieved something when in all reality made the process harder for you to create. Because now you have to deal with decision fatigue as well, of which lenses and cameras is needed without knowing anything about anything. I am contemplating selling one of my GH5s and the Noctocron mainly because they exceed my needs at the moment and I feel like having too many cameras in the stage even though it is the same camera makes me less creative for some reason. This will also free up some cash in case don't tell nobody in case I want to buy a S5. I have tried to take you into my thought process of why I bought these lenses. I think a lot of the purchases make sense, but I've definitely gone over to collecting phase where I have exceeded the needs and even my pleasure. I am letting go of the Noctocron and a GH5. It's hard, but there's no need for me to have them. It's better to free up some cash, not necessarily to use for anything, maybe an S5, but just to have the cash just in case. See, there's nothing wrong with buying expensive gear. I'm not trying to guilt someone or tell people they have an addiction or not. Because with anything in life, and especially things related to art, there will always be growing pains. This was more my attempt to explain my situation and maybe somebody out there having the same thoughts that I have. My financial situation at the moment does not allow for me to have this type of gear. Yours might be different, and I want to make this clear. I'm not trying to tell you how to spend your money. These are just my personal reflections. I hope you enjoyed this monologue. For some people, this might be a walking down memory lane for all the current and X-Mic 4 users out there. Thank you for watching.